Whether in your handbag, a drawer at home, or your desk at work, chances are you have acetaminophen on hand, just in case headache or back pain strikes. It is the most widely used pain relief medication in the United States, and it's also considered one of the safest. But recently, its perceived safety has come into question. Welcome to another video. If you enjoy this type of content, then subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out on any of our latest and greatest uploads. Acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol or APAP, is a drug commonly used to alleviate mild to moderate pain and to reduce fever. It's present in more than 600 over-the-counter, or OTC, and prescription medications, including Tylenol and Vicodin. Headache, muscle aches, back pain, toothache, colds, menstrual pain, and arthritis are among the numerous conditions that acetaminophen is used for. According to the Consumer Healthcare Products Association, or CHPA, each week, around 23% of adults in the US, or 52 million Americans, use a medication containing acetaminophen. At recommended doses, acetaminophen is considered one of the safest OTC medications. Unlike other common pain relievers, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, acetaminophen does not raise the risk of stomach or heart problems, making it a go-to medication for people who are unable to tolerate NSAIDs. What's more, healthcare providers consider acetaminophen one of the few pain relievers that is generally safe to use during pregnancy. A 2010 study from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, found that the drug causes no increased risk of major birth defects when used in the first trimester of pregnancy. But as with all medications, there are risks, and researchers are finding that the risks of acetaminophen may be more serious than we realized. Last year, a review in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases concluded that the possible risks of acetaminophen have been, quote, underestimated, with some studies suggesting the drug could raise the risk of cardiovascular events and mortality. In this spotlight, we take a look at some of the well-established risks of acetaminophen use, as well as some that may come as a surprise. Liver damage is perhaps the most well-known risk of acetaminophen use and such damage can arise through overdosing on the drug. After taking acetaminophen, most of the drug is metabolized by the liver and excreted through urination. However, some of the drug is converted into a toxic metabolite that can harm liver cells. Taking too much acetaminophen raises the risk of liver damage, and in severe cases, it can lead to death. According to the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, between 1998 and 2003, acetaminophen was the leading cause of acute liver failure in the US, and almost half of liver failure cases during this period were a result of accidental overdose. Furthermore, the FDA states that during the 1990s, unintentional acetaminophen overdose was responsible for around 56,000 emergency department visits, 26,000 hospitalizations, and 458 deaths each year. Because acetaminophen is present in such a wide range of OTC and prescription drugs at varying doses, it can be quite easy to accidentally take too much, particularly if using multiple acetaminophen-containing medications at once. Current guidelines recommend taking no more than 4,000 mg of acetaminophen daily. Considering a single extra-strength Tylenol tablet contains 500 mg, it's easy to see how one may accidentally overdose on the drug. What's more, acetaminophen-induced liver damage occurs slowly, often going unnoticed until it's too late. So people may think that taking a little extra acetaminophen than recommended is posing no harm. With this in mind, in 2011, the FDA asked prescription drug manufacturers to voluntarily limit the amount of acetaminophen in each tablet or capsule to no more than 325 milligrams in order to reduce consumers' risk of accidental overdose. As of 2014, the organization reported that just half of prescription drug manufacturers had voluntarily complied with the request, prompting them to launch proceedings to withdraw approval of prescription combination drugs containing more than 350 milligrams. Additionally, the FDA recommends that healthcare providers consider prescribing combination drugs containing less than 350 milligrams of acetaminophen per dose. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. 
If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for content just like it.